Welcome to another one of our lectures in our video lecture series on design of reinforced concrete structures and today we are looking at a numerical problem regarding the analysis of doubly reinforced beam. So here we are given a beam with a cross-sectional dimensions, the width equal to 350 mm and the effective depth equals to 550 mm. The grade of concrete of this beam is M30 and the grade of steel is Fe415. The area of compression reinforcement is 1690 mm square and the area of tensile reinforcement is 4310 mm square. And finally, the distance from this extreme compression fiber to the centroid of our compression reinforcement that is D dash is given it's 60 mm. You can also see a graph on your skin right now, but we will come to this graph when we proceed with our solution. And remember here, we are not concerned with the diameter of the bars and the number of bars instead we are directly given the area of reinforcement so we are we will use those values directly into our solution so let us proceed with the solution of this problem we are to find the ultimate moment capacity of this beam and we will proceed with the solution of this problem in the same way that we have discussed during our theoretical classes so the first step in the solution of this problem is the calculation of value yaksu. Yaksu is the depth of neutral axis from the extreme compression fiber. At present, we do not know the value of yaksu. So let us assume is our first trial value. The value of yaksu equals to yaksu max. That means we assume that the depth of neutral axis is equal to the limiting depth. So if you assume this, we can find the value of yaksu in two ways. One is by using the formula 0.0035 over 0.0055 plus 0.87 EFY over ES. This formula we derive from the compatibility of strengths. In our strain diagram for the cross section of our reinforced beam, we considered similar triangles and got to the value of this formula and you have to multiply by D here. Or another way to find is since we have assumed that yaksu equals to yaksu max, we know that for grade of steel yaksu 415, the value of yaksu max is given is 0.48 D. So essentially this equation which is inside this bracket is almost equal to 0.48. So use either of these formula to determine the value of xu. You will get the value of xu is 263.50 mm. And this is also the limiting value of xu equals to xu max. So yfy we use 415 and es. Remember we are using the modulus of elasticity of steel is 2 into 10 to the power 5 megapascals or newton per millimeter square. So after calculating the value of xu, now we will calculate the value of strain in our steel that is epsilon sc. Epsilon sc is the strain in our compression steel and the value of epsilon sc is also calculated from our similar triangle rule using compatibility of strains. And the value of yaksu, we know that we have derived its value is 0.0035 into xu minus d dash by xu. Now this becomes 0.0035. The value of xu we have got is 263.50. d dash is equals to 60 mm over 263.50. And this comes out to be 0.0027. So corresponding to this value of strain in steel, we have to determine the value of stress. We know that as we discussed during our classes, the value of FSC, that is the stress in our steel, will be equal to the value of epsilon SC into the modulus of elasticity for the value of epsilon SC less than or equal to 0 0.696 FY over ES. So if we use this formula to calculate the value of epsilon yassi, 
then that value of epsilon yes it comes out to be greater than 0 0.696 fy over es so that you cannot use this formula to find the value of the stress in our steel instead what you have to do is this figure 3 which is the stress strain core for cold worked steel is given in sp16 that is our design aids for is code 456 and corresponding to the value of 0 0.0027 from this graph here you have to determine the value of stress which is given in the y-axis from your design code so you can see here your design code for 415 grade of steel is given here which i have encircled here so from the value of strain of 0.0027 let's see here here we have 0 0.002 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 so this is the value of strain 0 0.0027 from this value of strain draw a vertical line you can draw a vertical line from this value of strain to our design core for EFP 415 grade steel so this vertical line meets the curve here and from this value of or the touching point in the curve draw a horizontal line to the y-axis so you can see that corresponding to the value of 0 0.0027 the value of stress in steel is 350 newton per mm square so the value of efsc we take is 350 megapascals or 350 newton per mm square now after determining the value of efsc which is the value of stress in steel we determine the value of stress in concrete EFCC which is given as 0.447 FCK this comes out to be 0.447 into 30 which is equal to 13.41 Newton per mm square and the value of stress in tensile steel EFST is given as 0.87 AST so this is 0.87 into sorry this is not ast this is 0 0.87 fy 0 0.87 into 415 this comes out to 361.05 newton per mm square now if you compare these two values fcc and fst you can see that the value of fcc is very small as compared to the value of fst we discussed about this comparison of their magnitudes during our classes also now finally what you can do is you can calculate the actual value of yaksu after getting all of these values here remember in our first step we have assumed the value of yaksu to be equal to x u max but now in our third step we will calculate the actual value of yaksu and this actual value of yaksu is given by the equilibrium equation between the compression and tension forces in our beam so we know that the value of yaksu becomes 0 0.87 fy ast minus fsc minus fcc into asc over 0 0.36 fck into b so AST is the amount of tension reinforcement which is 4310 and ASC is the amount of compression reinforcement which is 1690. So substitute all the values into this equation the value of YAXU becomes 0 0.87 into 415 into 4310 minus FSC here is 361.05 FCC is 13.41 and ASC is 1690 mm square divided by 0 0.36 into 30 into 350 and this comes out to be 261.23 mm so the value of XU comes out to be 261.23 mm the value of XU max which we got from our first step is 263.50 mm. 
So if you compare these two values, you get that xu is less than xu max. Hence, our beam here is under reinforced. Now, after determining the value of xu here, we have to repeat these steps 2 and 3 until the value of our xu converges. That means, now assume the value of xu to be another value. You can take the value of xu to be the average of your two values here. For example, the initial value that we have got here is 263.50 and the final value here we have got is 261.23. So what you can do is, you can do the average of these two values and the new value of xu which we get after doing the average then you can use that value of yaxu to determine this epsilon yasc yfsc yfcc and yfst so now let's suppose that our value of yaxu is equal to okay for now i will just suppose this 261.23 mm now we have to repeat steps 2 and 3 so from step 2, we calculate the value of epsilon yasc equals to 0.0035. Now our yaxu is 261.23, d dash is 60 over 261.23. This comes out to be 0.002696. Now if you compare these two values of the strain in our steel here, Previously, we got 0.0027. Now, we have got 0.00296, which is also very equal, nearly equal to 0.0027, such that if we again use this value of strain here in our graph to find the value of stress in our steel, that comes out to be 350 Newton per mm square. So, there is no any realistic difference in using these two values of yaxu, either 261.23 or the initially assumed value of 263.50 hence we are not doing any repeat iterations here if this epsilon sc value was markedly different from the initial value of epsilon sc that means if these two values were very different then you have to use the new value of epsilon sc again to find the new value of fsc and then fcc and then fst and after getting these all values, then you will go to the iteration of third step and then you calculate the value of yaxu. You compare that value of yaxu to the previous value of yaxu that you used, that is 261.23. And you had to repeat these steps 2 and 3 until the value of yaxu converges. But since here, the value of strain is not coming out to be very much different even when we have used a different value of yaxu here so we will adopt this value of neutral axis depth that is 261.23 so after determining the value of yaxu now you can finally determine the value of the ultimate moment capacity which comes out to be we know the equation 0.36 fck bxu d minus 0.416 xu plus fsc minus fcc asc d minus d dash now fck is 30 b means 350 xu means here 261.23 d value is 550 fsc and fcc you use this value here always remember this fsc and fcc should be calculated after determining the value of yaxu and epsilon yasc here so if you have performed iterations and got new value of yaxu then corresponding to that you have to determine the value of fcc fst and then use that same value here but for now fsc is 350 newton per millimeter square and fcc is 13.41 newton per millimeter square asc we have is 1690 mm square 
d and ds we already have this so if you substitute all the values this comes out to be 717.37 kilonewton meter which is our final answer and this is the ultimate moment capacity of this doubly reinforced beam so this brings us to the end of this numerical we in this numerical we calculated the ultimate moment capacity of our doubly reinforced beam and we did this numerical based on the computations and general procedure we took the help of the design at sp16 and in sp16 we looked at figure number three to determine the value of stress in our steel and the remaining problem we solved by using the formulas so in another tutorial we will look at the design of a w reinforced beam so till then stay safe and we'll meet soon thank you